Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzma with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the sea. Lovely day out there. Almost got this report in late because I was going to go out surfing. Look at those little tiny waves. Not quite big enough. You can see a few guys out there right now. And you can see the tractors looking for bodies. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> for, you, for, for those of you who don't live here, they just clean the seaweed off the beaches every day, which hasn't been too bad lately. So let's get into the craziness, which is the markets in the world as it is. Looks like today, uh, Friday, uh, January 29th, uh, markets are up today. Gold looks up about 30 bucks, a buck for silver, and 35 bucks up for platinum. But we'll get into that in a minute. Let's talk about dollar collapse. Uh, uh, we've got some other news to talk about, but this is something that's always been on our radar here. Um, and when I say dollar collapse, I don't, I don't want. Uh, this is not a clickbait type show, uh, and I'm not saying that. But we are in a decline of the dollar and the decline of a fiat currency. No fiat currency has lasted as long as the United States currency has. Uh, the United States dollar has. We are the longest surviving fiat currency in history to this date. Uh, however, at some point, we are going to go down in the flaming ship. And hopefully not. It sure be nice to get some smart legislators in Washington that uh, people that had some economic brains uh, uh, to start running things and uh, uh, start getting the Fed uh, on the straight and narrow. Uh, because, you know, the dollar, <laughs> we all rely on it. I mean, what are we going to do? Uh, except buy more, more of them with our gold, I guess. A uh, good little article here by uh, uh, Mrs. Institute. I like some of their stuff. The dollar's reserve currency won't last forever. Uh, the Federal Reserve and the Confederation of Central Banks, uh, which followed Chris Powell and his lieutenants, uh, have flooded the world with fiat script, which is only limited by Keynesians and modern monetary theorist imaginations. Which means they're they're you know we're just really over the top printing right now. We're killing the dollar. Our 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 government is um, by these bailouts and uh, uh, bond buying and. I mean, they're killing the dollar, and that's actually good for gold, silver, and platinum. But, you know, you can't feel too good about it because it's not good for the, uh, the future of the kids in the world in this country. It's not good for the future of this country at all. Uh, in fact, it could very well drag us down into a third world type status. <sighs> well, anyways, uh, tellingly, and, and they, one of the things that the author here is talking about is that uh, Russia... Uh, years ago had realized that the United States was going to go on this spending spree, and not just a spending spree, we started weaponizing the dollar. So, if, if the uh, country or the people that you rely on to control the currency that you spend and you use in your everyday living, whether it's food, gas, buying weapons, or whatever it is that uh, Russia, China, Australia, UK, all these countries do, they rely on the US dollar. And if they're looking at us, and they're, and they're saying, what the F are those guys doing? They are just printing like crazy. They're making the money that we use uh, worthless. Uh, what, what is, and, and not only that, they're weaponizing it. If, you know, like with Russia and China, uh, uh, you know, at one time, they could pretty much use the U.S. dollar. Even if uh, we were hating on them and they were hating on us, they would still use the dollar uh, as a means of trade. But now we weaponize that dollar. And, you know, a good example would be Venezuela and uh, uh, Iran is how we weaponize the dollar. And, you know, it seems like a good idea to the war hawks and people that don't understand economics and don't understand how the dollar is the world currency or do not care um, are really screwing up the entire uh, economic system. They absolutely are. Um, we have uh, political leaders worldwide that are complete freaking morons. I'm sorry, I'm about to say it. Our country is just about one of the worst or, or, or up there. As far as economic responsibility, there, that word doesn't exist in Washington, D.C., nor in uh, uh, the Fed, I guess. Uh, anyway, to move along here, Putin has kind of de-dollarized Russian's economy. I've been talking about this for the last seven months. Uh, actually, for years I've been talking about this, the de-dollarization uh, because of uh, our irresponsibility and uh, our weaponizing it. And uh, 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 it looks like the uh, Russians don't even need the dollar, pretty much. They're completely out of the dollar. Uh, it says here, Americans have benefited mightily by holding a trade in the world's reserve currency, though most people haven't given a thought. No one remembers when the pound sterling held this distinction 100 years ago. That's absolutely correct. Uh, Britain's pound was the world currency at one time, and look what happened to them. Uh, there's a lot of lessons to be learned in history, folks, and apparently our people in D.C. and our bankers have no clue what a history book is. Uh, reserve currency issuing countries are not exposed to the same level of exchange risk, especially when it comes to commodities which are often quoted and settled in dollars. Investopedia explains issuing countries are also able to borrow in their home currency and are less worried about propping up their currencies to avoid default. 
Investopedia laughingly cites what it calls a drawback to reserve currency. Low borrowing costs stemming from issuing a reserve currency may prompt loose spending <laughs> by both public and private sectors, which may result in asset bubbles and ballooning government debt. Sound familiar? Absolutely does. And why? Lack of responsibility and lack of understanding and reading about history, folks. That's exactly what we got going on. Our, our world's leaders and our, our leaders in this country, uh, whether it's banking leaders or whether it's political leaders, are completely fucking clueless. Excuse me. Uh, anyways, uh, I won't go off on that too much. Uh, and let me kind of see what he had quoted. Patrick Barron wrote on Mrs.org in 2015, Because of this money printing philosophy, the dollar is very susceptible to losing its vaunted uh, reserve currency position to the first major trading company that stops inflating its currency. There is evidence that China understands what is at stake. It has increased its gold holdings and has instituted controls over to pre prevent gold from leaving China. So, doll both China and Russia uh, are, are both de-dollarizing and have been in the act of getting rid of U.S. dollars and trading in their own currencies uh, because of uh, our reckless spending and because of... Uh, the fact that uh, uh, we weaponize a dollar. Uh, so they've left it. They're getting rid of it. They're at the last vestige where they don't need it anymore. And that is bad for people that are holding dollars, folks. It's good for you people holding gold and silver uh, and platinum like China and Russia is and, and other countries. But it's bad for anyone holding dollars, paper in their hands. This is not good. Uh, and as you can read, Russia has joined China. Baron, Baron concluded, if we abolish or even lessen the legal tender laws and allow the process of price discovery to reveal the best sound money, if we allow our U.S. dollar to become the best money it can, a truly sound money, then our chances of personal and collective prosperity are greatly enhanced. Meanwhile, the Fed, and I'll add, our politicians in Washington, D.C., fiddle while the dollar burns. I exactly agree with this article. Good article. Mrs. Institute is free to read. I'd put it on your uh, uh, favorites list at the top of your page here. Uh, and the name of that article is The Dollar's Reserve Currency Status Won't Last Forever uh, on the Mrs. Wire. And it's written by Doug French. Good job, Doug. Uh, something I've been talking about for years and years now, and we've been talking about on our show for the last year. Well, let me move on to Zero Hedge and just do a little bit of news here. Let me see what else is up here. Ah, let's look at this article real quick before we get to ZH. Uh, Epic gold market to follow Epic stock market bubble. Uh, most investors are more interested. This I found this common interest, and mostly why I pulled this up. Most investors are more interested in getting rich than preserving wealth, and that is the problem we have with this country. Everyone wants to be a movie star. Everyone wants to be a billionaire. Everyone wants to be rich. And if you spend more time focusing on getting rich but not preserving what you make, you are screwed. Uh, and that's exactly what consumerism does. And that's exactly what Wall Street wants you to do. And that's exactly what the government wants you to do. They want you to act like you're going to be rich. They don't want you preserving wealth. That doesn't benefit them in any way. Uh, so anyway, one of the other big issues we have with this country is, is we don't preserve wealth. We blow it. We look for uh, bigger returns. We look for getting rich. We want to be the movie stars. But the problem is, folks, 99% of us won't be. 99% of us, the best bet we have is preservation of the wealth we have made and trying to keep what we have. You know, uh, a lot of millionaires and billionaires and people that have made a lot of money will tell you the, 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 the biggest thing on making money and becoming rich is not making it, it's keeping it, folks. Uh, and something that we're very bad at doing as a whole in this country. Uh, and we were just talking about it with the U.S. dollar. dollar. We were the, the, the big uh, dog in the yard. We were the U.S. dollar all over the world. Everybody wanted the U.S. dollars, whether you were in a jungle in Vietnam or Russia or China or Australia. They wanted the dollar. And, and what did we do? We got greedy with it. We got completely greedy with it, and we killed it, more or less. Uh, that's because we're more interested in getting rich, which is an illusion, uh, than preserving wealth, because you can't get rich unless you preserve your wealth. It's impossible. So, uh, anyways, <laughs> I went off a little bit here. Uh, stocks or gold. Uh, I like this, too. During the last 50 years, we have seen five vicious corrections of the Dow between 41% and 55%. But even these corrections, the Dow is 39 times higher than in 1971. You know, I'm a little iffy when people start picking specific dates because you're cherry-picking data from a specific time frame. But it's, the article is still interesting. But it hasn't been an easy journey for this asset either. There are only three major corrections in a half a century, between 33 and 70 percent. I'm, of course, talking about gold. Uh, 1971 to 1921. It looks like the Dow Jones was up 39 times. 
uh, and gold was up 53 times its value. Corrections, 41 to 55, 33 to 70. Um, will the Dow lose 97% in real terms? I think there was, anyway, I want you to read this article. It's kind of pretty good, uh, and I'm not going to read the whole thing. I like this guy, Egon von Greiser's, or Greyer's, uh, uh, articles, um, Matterhorn Assets. Uh, I think they're a paper company that does paper gold. I don't know if they do physical, but even if they do physical, I will still beat their prices. And yes, they do make great articles. <laughs> uh, but anyway, good article to read. Uh, has some good points in here. Uh, central bankers have created false markets since 1913. This is absolutely true. These are asset bubbles that are created by the Fed uh, by loosening uh, 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 loans or making money easy to get and uh, also making it cheaper to get. Uh, well, let me see. Boy, it's a long article. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Again, your homework for today is to read. Uh, they're probably happy, too. I'm sending people to their site. Uh, but I don't care. Like I said, I can beat any of these guys' prices uh, on precious metals. Uh, doesn't mean that they don't have good content, though, and I'm, I'm going to show it. Uh, so anyway, good article by Egon von Greiser, Greyers. I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, and he's written a few good articles. Uh, I'd go and... Uh, uh, do a Google search under this right here and you'll find it. Read that article today. I think you'll find it real interesting. Uh, I'm going to get to uh, my little rundown on ZH on, on the news today. And there's really, gosh, it's almost depressing waking up and looking at news general. Uh, cash strap Robin Hood scrambles to create, uh, raise $1 billion from the rich. Uh, you know that whole deal with Robin Hood yesterday. Um, oh, and I forgot to talk about that. There was some talk about them running into silver. Uh, silver jumped up yesterday, but it jumped up today as well. Is that a result of uh, uh, all these uh, uh, Robin Hood people and all these people on that uh, Wall Street bets uh, uh, site maybe starting to move into silver? I don't know. Hard to say. Uh, the move in silver was not that great and not abnormal for silver to move in dollar and two dollar ranges. We've seen that for many, many years. And gold's up too, and they weren't really bidding up gold. Uh, so I'm not quite sure what, what effect that Robin Hood post had or that uh, Wall Street Bets post had about silver yesterday. I do think it had some effect, though, because I think there are some people buy, out there buying silver. Uh, let's see if that builds, though, and, and I'll follow up on that more next week, and we'll see what happens. Uh, Trump will be actively involved in Republican Party. Um, legends, oh, this is interesting. Legendary short seller Andrew Luff says discontinue in short selling research. Well, it looks like that... Uh, uh, it's kind of a strange environment out there, man. Uh, uh, the crowd is actually, uh, uh, as far as the market goes, the crowd is actually getting their way somewhat uh, with these big companies. Uh, but let's see what happens and where this goes. Uh, crypto restricted on Robinhood after much common spikes on Bitcoin. And I'm going to speed through here and look for things that might have some effects on gold and silver. Uh, Bitcoin, Bitcoin soars 15% on Elon Musk tweet. But the scary thing about this is, you know, when, when, when a person, an individual, or, or a small group can make comments that causes, I mean, that don't have any fundamentals behind it. They just say, it's going to be up, not why or anything. It's just going to be up. And when, when, when any kind of group or person or individual or whatever can make comments that just cause a market to go up without giving an explanation why it should, uh, that's a little bit crazy. I don't know if that's crazy or the people following that advice are crazy. Probably the people following that advice. Listen, if someone tells you something's going, going to go up and you're going to make money on it, the first logical question you should have is, why? Why is it going up? And they should be able to explain to you a good reason. If you don't understand it, it's your fault. Uh, uh, if they don't give you a good reason, it's their fault. Uh, but meanwhile, just buying something because you heard it was going to go up, Freaking crazy, folks, but we live in crazy clown world right now, as far as my opinion goes. Anyways, I'm going to get off a, uh, I'm going to get off a zero hedge right here and move into the markets. Um, the ranges were pretty crazy today. It kind of got snapped back down after New York opened here. So it looks like the uh, early morning markets were a little bit crazy. I'm going to do a refresh there, and let's see where we go. Back up a little bit. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, world markets here, which are open. New York's open as well, but you'll see it's exactly the same because uh, they kind of roll it over through the day. Um, let's look at the range first. Uh, a low of 1840, that was yesterday, more or less, uh, and a high of 1875. So, yeah, that's a pretty good range there. Currently, we're sitting at 1860 with gold. It's up 17 bucks. Uh, silver, wow, crazy ride there. Down a little bit. I saw this morning it was as high as 2766. Uh, yesterday, as low as 26. So, in a 24-hour range, we've had a kind of that's a pretty uh, steep, you know, $1.60. Right now, we're up uh, $0.65 cents, uh, since yesterday's New York close. 
uh, and silver's over that $27 mark. Uh, I think I saw it at $27.66 this morning. And uh, platinum was at $1,100 when I last looked. It looks like it's come down a little bit, but across the board, markets are up, so it's good. Um, you know, again, I recommend that. You know, I, I, if I've been telling you to hold, 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 and, you, and you've been waiting for me to tell you to sell, uh, because you have to, because I definitely wouldn't recommend you sell into this market, even if it's up today. But if you had to sell in the last week or so, uh, and you've been waiting for me to kind of hit that sell mark, if you have to sell, again, I recommend buy or hold. Um, a hold right now because I think we may see a little dip here, but uh, uh, it, you're in a good market right now. You're up a couple bucks, 20 bucks from where you were on gold, and you're up quite a bit on silver. Uh, so if you had to sell uh, this week and you've been waiting to pull the trigger, today's a day. But meanwhile, I don't recommend it unless you have to. Uh, in fact, I recommend hold and buy. Uh, I think at some point we're going to look at $2,000 gold, $30 silver as cheap. We're going to look at uh, $2,000 gold like we look at $1,000 gold now. We're going to look at $30 silver like we look at $20 silver or less now. Um, I think we're moving into a different territory here, and uh, uh, these numbers are going to be the past, and we're going to wish we had bought in at these levels. I'm even going to kick myself, and I've been doing this for 40 years. Why did I buy more? <laughs> well, anyways, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. If anything crazier happens, I'll follow up with another report today, but more than likely you won't hear from me until Monday. Uh, I think the markets are going to be a little crazy, a little bit up. Um, Oh, and I got some one-ounce silver product available to me. It just got uh, uh, shipped. It's going to be here a little while. I know we're out of one-ounce generics for a while. I've got plenty of silver eagles, uh, even though the generics are cheaper. 100-ounce bars are available. 90% uh, is available. Uh, some of the premiums on some of the stuff, especially 90%, has gone up a little bit. Uh, maybe that's because I keep advising people to buy it, and it's getting shorter. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but uh, uh, still some product available out there. Gold product is available. Uh, so get it while you can. Get it while it's hot, and get it while the premiums aren't too crazy, folks. Uh, like I said, Brian Kuzma or Commercial Rare Coins. Call me anytime at 954-493-8811. Between Mondays and Fridays, we're open 10 to 4. Uh, happy to answer any questions, tell you what the best pr uh, products are, uh, give you spot prices, and whatever I can teach you. Meanwhile, thanks for watching these videos. Uh, if you haven't, please hit the like and subscribe button. It's really helpful for me. And I've noticed that we've been getting more watchers and more subscribers. Makes me happy, and I really appreciate it, folks. Uh, thanks again. Have yourself a great day. Talk to you later.